this talk, I thought about how I could benefit you the most based on what I do and who I am. And I thought, well, I'm a woman, which all of you are, so that doesn't help us any. And I'm a single mom, and a lot of you have children, so that doesn't help any. And I am a holistic cosmetic dentist, and so I'm sure all of you know how to brush and floss and see your dentist on a regular basis, so that won't help you. And then I have this online business, and it's kind of geared for dentists, so what I thought about instead was pulling something that has been a bit of a core in my life, a, a passion of mine for the last 10 years where I'm learning and growing um, in one particular area. And I thought, because it applies to all the things that I am and I do, I thought I would share that with you today instead. So before I do that, I want to ask you um, a question. I want you to tell me, what, what do you think comes to mind when we say the word selling or a salesperson to most people? What kind of words can describe a salesperson in general? Runaway. Pushy. Runaway? Pushy? What else? Aggressive. Aggressive. <laughs> so what I want you to get is that the most important skill in life, and it has a negative connotation to it, so I want to give you another word for it. And it's a word that all leaders have, and it's influence. What changes companies is leadership. If I want to shift a company, if I want to make a difference in that company, I need to shift the leadership. And that may mean bring new leaders in, bring new perspectives, new skills, new directions. We need to take things to another level. Leaders solve problems and leaders maximize resources. And that requires influence. If I need to get more capital, or if I need to deal with suppliers, or if I need to deal with my clients, that all requires influence. If I want to have impact on my kids, my community, or my business, all that requires influence. It is the most important skill in leadership, yet most of us think of it like selling, and we don't master it. Now, I'm not a master of influence, and I can't do anything in 10 minutes that will change your life. But I think a lot of you, even in speaking with you guys to, uh, yesterday, a lot of you have that skill, and I can see it in your passion. But I do know one thing, that if you can't influence the people around you, you can't lead. But if you can influence properly, intelligently, with integrity, you can do anything. And if you can turn the people around you into influencers, you can do anything and you can turn any vision into reality. So, I want you to raise your hand if you agree with me on this. Leaders change companies. And the other thing, raise your hand if you also agree that leader's number one skill is influence. So the question becomes, how do you influence? What influences people? Do facts and figures influence people? No, because we would not be smoking or over drinking or overeating. What influences people is emotion. That's the big game. So human beings are emotional creatures and we as leaders need to remember that. So in order to impact them, or influence them. We need to know what already influences them. And that means we need to get to connect with them on a deeper level. That's true influence. So if you want to influence someone, you have to be influenced. In order to move someone, you have to be moved. You can't touch somebody with your product or your service or your vision if you're not touched. Steve Jobs was a perfect example of that. To persuade others, you have to be persuaded. Now, I want you to think about when you first started your business, like the very first year. I remember when I first started my practice, I was, you know, broke and living on loans and no help and just starting from scratch building my business. And I would do anything. I would get on the floor on my hands and knees, wash that floor, take the garbage out, sterilize instruments, clean everything. There's nothing I wouldn't do. But about like five or seven years later, if you came to me and said, hey, can you take out the garbage? I'd be like, what am I, your janitor? Mm -hmm. So what changes is that after a while, there's something called the law of familiarity. And what the law of familiarity states is that when you're around something long enough, you take it just a little bit for granted, or someone for those of you in long-term relationships. So when you're around something enough, you think of it as less important, even though you know it's important, you kind of get used to it and you don't show that you care, even though you do. 
So you start to intellectualize it rather than feel it in your body with passion. But what most people don't realize is passion must be reinforced constantly. Like any muscle, if you don't use it, you lose it. So you still get the basics, like a skeleton, but you lose the why. So if we're going to influence others, we must first be able to influence ourselves. We have to look at ourselves first. We have to get into the emotions that are going to lead us into action, and that needs to be ongoing. So how many of you have days like this? Raise your hand if you have days where you wake up and you go, I don't want to see people today. <laughs> but as leaders, we don't have that choice because we have to be able to master ourselves and master our state and master the state of our business. And it starts with whom? Ourselves. Because we are the first constraint. So how do we change and influence ourselves? Well, it comes down to rituals. We all have daily rituals. Now let me give you an example. How many of you work out three or four times a week, no matter what? Now, I'm not judging here. We all have different lives and different situations and so on. But the people that work out three or four times a week, no matter what, that's just who they are. They go to the gym. They go to yoga. They go for a run. They go for a bike ride. It's just who they are. They don't even think about it. They just go. So that's their ritual. And those people will have a different body than the people who don't. Same goes for saving. If you're saving 20% of your income, no matter what, or 10%, you will have a different mindset and a different ritual and so a different future. So I want to leave you with this one thought. Do you know what the single biggest key to success is? It's consistency. The single biggest key to success is being consistent with some key habits. Every single business person I've ever met that is successful has done so through rituals, daily habits that they do ongoing. There's a famous quote by Aristotle that says, we are what we repeatedly do. Now think about that statement for a minute. We are a product of our daily habits. <coughs> In order to change who we are or change how we are, how to change our business, we need to change what we do daily, how we feel daily. Success doesn't come from doing extraordinary hard things once in a while. It comes from doing small, consistent things all the time. And a lot of people get tripped up by this simplicity. And a lot of you have touched on this yesterday, actually, interestingly. You talked about the law of attraction. I'm a big believer in that. What you give out comes back to you. So there's another famous quote by a man I hope to marry one day. It says, it's in your moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. Now, what Robbins talks about in that is you may think of something for a long time. You may think, I should do this or I should do that. But when you make a decision, it's a moment. And then once that decision is made, that decision leads to action. And action leads to consistent action. And consistent action leads to results which become your destiny. So whatever you become, or whatever your business becomes, it's who you who shaped it that way. Now, if all you do is take what you learn, whether it's here or anywhere else, and you just write it down in your notebook and leave it in your head and don't take the first step, don't take a committed action to it, it'll die in that notebook. So motivation without action leads to self-delusion. So you need to take the first step. So whatever it is that you've been thinking about or talking about or wishing you could do, take that first step. Commit to that step today. Because commitment is doing the things you said you were going to do long after the moods you said it in has left you.